All right, welcome to Helpers Help Out episode number eight. I'm Sasha Chua, and today is February 7, 2014. Today, we're going to focus on copywriting tips for your titles, as well as ideas for how to market your help outs through tweets, uh, the introductory video that's a new requirement, and other ways that you can reach out. Our guest today is Ramon Williamson, whom you might know from his excellent copywriting tips shared in previous help Helpers Help Out episodes, as well as his posts in the Help Outs Discuss community. Aside from doing a lot of great help outs, which you should check out because he has a lot of good advice for coaching as well as uh, copywriting and other topics, uh, uh, Ramon is also a life coach and does also, and apparently a, a graphics designer by uh, a, as a hobby. So, a uh, person of many talents, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to picking his brain about interesting things about copywriting. Now, the reason why this is important is because well, when, you, when you've got your listing, you've really just got your title, a short description, and now an introductory video to sell your points. Ramon, do, what, are you, you know, what are the mistakes that you're often seeing people make when they, when they put together that listing or that video? Well, Sasha, I'm excited to, to be back here with you again, and that's a really great question. And as I was thinking about this to prepare for tonight, what I realized is that so often in a conversation about marketing, about copywriting, or anything related, often what ends up happening is people focus on a series of tips or they give you some formula or, or a series of steps to follow. And, and while uh, we're going to give some of that tonight, and, and that's important, I think it's also important to realize that the number one mistake that people make is not investing the time up front to think about their market, uh, what the people in their market really want, what it is they're actually offering, and, and, and having an understanding, an empathetic understanding of the people that they want to help before they approach even creating the, the help out concept overall. Uh, that's really the number one mistake that I see people making in this type of, of helping, uh, authoring, advice, teach online, life coach type of business. And so I think really the first thing that you've got to do is, is step back and ask yourself, what's the conversation? Who are the people that I can contribute to and help? And what are the most pressing concerns that are on their mind? What are the hot topics they're talking about right now? And where is the intersection with what I know that when I bring those two things together, uh, people are immediately going to see the value. They're going to immediately get the value of what it is, what it is I'm offering. Until and unless you do this, Sasha, what happens is you tend to create a uh, generic, non-specific help out listing, for example, applying this to the concept of help outs. But that also happens when people are creating products, when they are positioning anything that they are creating in the marketplace. And I think what people are looking for today is they're looking for a specific detail. Uh, and the only way that you bring that detail, and, and the distinction here is knowledge about versus experience with. A lot of people approach what they do from a knowledge about perspective. And so again, it, it, it becomes generic in what they're actually saying. And, and what people want is they want somebody that's speaking from experience with a specific thing that can give them those nitty gritty details and those distinctions and those specifics that either save them a tremendous amount of time, help them get the result much faster, and, and Sasha, this only comes out of having done it. And, and, and that's why I talk to people about the importance of starting with your glory story. What have you been able to figure out about your topic or about what you teach? And, and what specific results have you got? And, and then what you want to do is you want to build your products and services and conversations around that glory story where it intersects with the hot topic that's in the market that everybody is talking about, that everybody's frustrated with, that everybody wants answers and solutions for. And when you do that, you come to a help out or anything else that you want to do in your business with a completely different mindset. 
I often talk about, and I remember years ago, I had the, 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 the privilege of coaching a man who at the time was considered the number one, number one copywriter in the world. In fact, he wrote a postcard that brought in a million dollars from the mailing of that postcard. A very, very effective copywriter. And I asked him, uh, you know, what's your secret? If you could tell a person one thing that would be the secret to being effective as a copywriter, what would it be? And without hesitation, he responded to me, empathy. Empathy is the master secret of copywriting, the master secret of marketing. And I believe the master secret of creating any kind of, of relationship that's significant in your life. And empathy is simply the ability to enter another person's world and to see and experience it from their perspective. And from a copywriting perspective, this is being able to use the language that they can hear, being able to speak to them in a way that it resonates with them and it articulates the experience that they're having and shows an understanding of the problem and the perspective uh, that they have and that they want to solve. And when you can do that, you don't have to be a great copywriter. You know, I, I don't like to brag about this, but I got an F in high school English. I'm not really a good writer, uh, though I wrote a book, and people pay me to write copy. And, and I can tell you the ability to put together words has, has really been, and I would say arguably one of the most important skills that I possess and one of the most important skills for an individual to develop. They're going to be successful in any kind of business, especially in an online context. And so, so I know that's a huge answer to your question, but really, I, I, if I had to say something to people and it was going to be the last conversation that I had with them or they weren't going to come back or they, they're only going to hear one thing here, so I would say take the time to think about your business and to ask yourself the questions that allow you to have an understanding, gain a perspective of what your ideal customers and clients are thinking, experiencing, feeling, wanting, and then to get into those conversations with them and to listen and begin to appreciate how they talk about it, what they say. Then when you show up to do something like a help out, whether it's coming up with the idea of what the help out is, you're going to be able to speak from a human perspective, not a marketing perspective. And, and it was the clue train that, that drew the distinction, a book called The Clue Train. There's a, there's a distinction, in it like, and I think, it's, I think it's actually the first distinction that they give in the book, that all markets are conversations. And these conversations are characterized or, or these conversations are heard when they are human. And, and, and so what doing your homework does and thinking about your business, it allows you to go from marketing hype language to human attractive irresistible language because you are speaking the the language of what's going on inside of the person and you're connecting with them in a deep way and I'll I'll, I'll pause there because there's probably a lot of different directions we can go from that. Well, let's you know let's try to drill down to the specifics so people can recognize what you know what what that means to them. Can you can you give me a couple of examples of maybe how about titles that stuck out at you as, as being knowledge oriented, being maybe less em empathic, empathetic, and and how about titles that really talk to you, that really resonated with you? Well, there's a there's a whole bunch of them, and and I think uh, rather than rather than pick on any of our providers, I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna type in here, um, helpouts.com. Google and I'm just going to pick one as an example and and just use it generically, you know, in the context of our conversation. Sure. Um, so so what I'm going to do here is what pops up, okay? What pops up here is um, one called home pest control, uh, and and there no, there's no feedback on this, so it's either a, a very new listing or, or whatever. But 
Okay, so here we go, home pest control. So, so what? <laughs> okay, I, you know, I, I can Google home pest control. Talk, give me something in this listing that is going to address a problem that is, that is likely on the mind of a lot of people right now. So, for example, um, one big thing you hear about is termites. Okay, so mm -hmm. so if I were in the pest control business, I were doing pest control helpouts. I might create multiple helpouts that address the the micro specific concerns that homeowners are going to have. So I would address something like, um, and and I do a couple of things because I and I'm just kind of peripherally aware of this because uh, I'm not obviously in the, in the pest control business. But I'm aware of things like bed bugs, okay? I'm aware of things like, like termites. So create a specific listing around how do you figure out if you've got termites, how do you, how do you solve it, what are the five or six questions that you need to ask a home pest control company before you hire them? That's what's really going to speak. That speaks to the frustration. See, when a homeowner is going to the yellow pages to find a pest control company, they're at, a dis they're at a disadvantage. They don't know what to ask. They don't know what to look for. They don't know how to make a determination whether that's a good pest control company or a bad one. So if I were doing help outs, for example, I would, because those people are not going to be local to me, the vast majority of the people, what I would do is I would position myself, hey, hey you do this help out before you even think about going to the Yellow Pages or going to Google and, and booking a health, uh, booking a, a home uh, pest control company. I'm going to teach you what to ask, what to look for, how to know if the estimate is correct or not. In other words, that's a perspective of a help out that would come mm -hmm. from an empathy understanding of, of, of a homeowner. I've actually been through this experience, so I know the frustration, I know the uncertainty, I know the fear of maybe you're going to get taken advantage of, maybe you're, okay, so that's one. Um, let me give you another one. I'm just going to go to a different category here and 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 talk about um, and look at another example. Now, by the way, I want to draw a distinction here because I just saw um, I just saw one of our our mutual friends, one of his helpouts, has a generic title. Mm -hmm. The generic title can work when it's a one-off uh, computer or uh, uh, help desk type of help out. The help desk type of help out, it can work with a generic title. However, I think it's always a good idea to be as specific as possible and have multiple help outs addressing the two or three primary uh, focused issues versus just one catch all help out. And a lot of people do that on help outs. They, they, they create these catch all listings and rather than creating a very specific listen that focuses on, on, on one thing. And again, you want, you want a person, you want to get in your shoes of a person that's coming to helpouts.google.com and ask yourself the question, okay, if they're experiencing this, first, what are they likely typing into the search box? What are they likely looking for? What are they likely perceiving as the problem that's standing in the way of what it is they want to accomplish? Get in the shoes of that person and then create your help out based on that. And again, uh, this is not about being, uh, about being fancy. It's not necessarily about, about having the perfect words. It, it's simply having an empathy understanding. And those words might be very simple. And as you, the more you understand about your market, the more that you can, can speak in a way where those little subtle distinctions come out in what you say that really connect uh, with a person. So, so I, I I just saw. Well, okay, that was a weird one. So I'm I'm not going to mention that <laughs> one. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes me curious. But uh, one yeah. of the things I was uh, what what I was um wondering about is all right. Uh, so it's a good idea to have multiple specific helpouts, and then it's also a good idea to have introductory videos. So how would you f build on the promise of this title, you know, this empathetic title that speaks to the, the customer's point of view? Uh, how do you build on that in your intro video? Hey, that's a great question because 
we we all just got a notice uh, from the from the help out uh, team that uh, that in lieu of doing the one to one interviews that you and I went through, uh, people in the future they're going to need to make a a video and a video is going to become mandatory to it is mandatory as of Monday. And so that's a really great question. So I want to try to tie this together in a very, very practical way. So really the first thing that you've got to do is start with something that is a part of your glory store, something you've figured out, and something specific, okay? And you want to, you want to niche that down to the point where it's a very specific deliverable, something that can actually be delivered within the help out itself. Again, I guess some people just do help outs because they want to talk to somebody, <laughs> but the vast majority of people who are coming to help outs, they're looking for something specific, and they're looking for that specific detail. And I can tell you over and over and over again, uh, because I, because I uh, have conditioned myself, I haven't always understood this, because I've conditioned myself to do this, uh, again and again and again, I get positive feedback, and people say, oh, I, I, I was very specific. He gave me specifics. He didn't hold anything back. That's the feeling that people get from you, that you're not holding anything back. You're not just giving them some surface information in an attempt to move them on to something else that you're going to charge them for or, or require some other action on their part. But they're getting something very, very specific, and so they feel it's worthwhile. They feel it's helpful. So, so start from that perspective. Then... What you want to do is ask yourself, what is the primary benefit or hidden benefit I'm going to deliver in this help out? So the primary benefit is you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to do this. I'm going to solve this specific problem that's a big deal. The hidden benefit is where you're solving a problem that they don't even realize that's the true problem that's actually going on. Uh, that might be the example, for example, the home pest control where this person, because that's their expertise, might be able to show you the two things that homeowners never think to ask. So that's a hidden benefit that actually could be the most important part of that 30-minute conversation that the person might have with that individual. So you ask yourself, what is the specific benefit? What's the biggest reason for them to click in and book this help out? Now, once you get that, that becomes the language that guides everything that you write in the help out listing, and it's also what you want to put in the title. And you've heard me say in the past, write the headline or the title of the help out last because it, it helps you to think through as you're writing that listing, what is that big benefit? And then you can frame it. And there are lots of uh, you know title headlines or title uh, templates, for example, how to works very well, specific numbers work very well, and also something that I don't see a lot of people doing is putting a, a negative qualifier in their in their title. And what a negative qualifier is is something like, for example, that's in my public speaking help out, where I say how to write a winning speech in as little as 20 minutes. Okay, so. So, so what's happening there is I'm appealing to two types of people, the people who want to write a winning speech and also the people who don't want to spend a lot of time with it. There's always something that people are moving away from related to your topic. And if you can integrate that into the description, into the, the actual title itself, you're going to really speak to those people and you're going to resonate deeply with them and, 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 and likely have them to book with you. Uh, versus anybody else. Now, how does that translate over into the video? Basically, the video, the video is a kind of mini listing. Okay, the video has a title. The video has uh, content, which would be the description, and the video has a call to action, which is the booking button to to schedule there within the help out itself. And so, when you're doing your video. What I, what I suggest is that you think about it like this. What's the big reason? Get this in your mind. What's the big reason to schedule this help out, this particular help out with me? Okay. Then you've got to frame it in a way where you are going to reveal that benefit to them in the help out. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's just take the pest control one, uh, for example. So if I were doing the pest control one, the first thing you want to do in the help out is you want – you want to affirm the person's decision to pick you. In other words, right up front, you want to say, hey, this is Ramon Williamson. 
I want to welcome you here to my pest control help out. You've made a great decision and I'm going to do everything that I can in our conversation to make sure that you're confident and you know exactly what you need to do to solve your pest control problem. Now, there are several things we can talk about in this help out and I'm going to highlight two things that are really important. First of all, we're going to, we're going to talk about the two things that most homeowners never think about to ask when it comes to pest control that can end up costing them a lot of money. I know about this because I've been doing it for 22 years. And, and that's why to go ahead and book with me because I'm going to give you that perspective so you can feel 100% confident in, in taking action to solve your pest control problems. Go ahead, book with me. I look forward to our conversation. So I just made that up off the top of my head. But there's three things that I did in that conversation that I recommend that you do in your help out video. Number one is you make that initial connection with the person. You let the person know, hey, you've made a great decision. I'm excited about having the conversation with you. Then what you're doing is you're giving them that little content teaser, that benefit teaser to say, hey, you know what? In this help out, we're going to talk about this, this, and this. Or we can talk about this, this, and I'm going to make sure I answer all of your questions so you feel 100% confident with what we've covered and you'll be able to, whatever that is, that specific benefit. And then you want to make sure that you have some sort of call to action where you say, hey, go ahead and schedule. I look forward to our conversation. Now, you could just take that. You don't have to get it right. You don't have to be good. You don't have to even like doing video, okay? <laughs> but you can... You can just use those three things. Hey, connect with the person. Smile. Don't be a grumpy boo on the, <laughs> on the video. Okay? Smile at the people. You know, talk to one person. Don't talk to them. Hey, everybody out there in Google land, I'm so excited you came to my help out. And uh, I'm looking to talk to all of you thousands of millions of people on Google. No, talk to one person and be human. Imagine that there's that one person, like we talked about in the previous help out, you want to have, have that persona in mind. Picture of that person, that ideal client or customer, and talk directly to that person. I think we've also, uh, Sasha, covered in a previous help out, or, or not previous help out, a, uh, a helper's help out, or somewhere, maybe it's in the discussion area where we talked about, um, I think I talked about how to, how to look, how to make a video look good on, uh, for example, a webcam. And I think we gave a couple of tips on that. And, and they can go in there. I think I put something in there about how to do video or share a video about that um, that people can actually, actually check out. And there's some good tips in there that will help you make the video better because you don't want the video looking dark and, and, and gloomy unless you're, you know, doing some kind of weird help out <laughs> like, you know, how to, how, to, how to do a monster movie or something, you know. I guess maybe then you'd want it dark and creepy. <laughs> But otherwise, you want it bright. You want it. You you want to smile. You want to look right into the camera. Um, a big deal also is 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 audio. Uh, so if you do a video on your phone, make sure that you get an external microphone. It's like a night and day difference. Okay. And there's one that I use. You can get it on on uh, Amazon. It's called the i microphone. If you just i microphone, and then it's an i microphone extension. You simply go over to Amazon, look that up, and and you can get it. And and I'm, I'll, I'll share the links with you, uh, Sasha, afterwards. But those are the things in terms of video. Um, don't worry about the video being perfect. Worry about the video being real and human and connect with that person. Keep the video short. Um, I, I'm thinking you need to keep that video like a minute, okay? Like a minute, minute and a half, okay? You don't want to... Don't want to uh, draw, you know, on and on and on and on with the video. Just, just give them a quick connect to let them know you're a genuine, real person. Also, do the video in the setting that you're going to be doing to help out. Don't go out and do some professional video where you're in a studio with stuff flying around behind you. Don't go outside and do the video like walking down the street, okay? Do the video where you're going to do the help out so that, they get a sense of what they're going to actually experience when they get on the help out with you. Um, let me give you a couple of other things with video that I've seen people doing. I've seen people linking out 
to videos on YouTube that go in a little bit more detail. This is especially helpful if you're doing a paid help out. If you've got a video which, which gives a little bit more in-depth that establishes your credibility, again, you don't want it to be a long video, maybe three to five minutes, but they can get that little excerpt with it. Whoa, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about, and they're likely worth you know, the $10, the $20, the $30, the $50, whatever it is that you're actually charging. Using video that way can be very, very, very powerful uh, to, 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 to help a person. All right. So, okay. So, basically, video build on the story that you've told, you've started telling in your title. You you use the title to connect with people, and then in the video, you make that connection. You affirm their decision to to at least check you out, if not book you. Uh, and then you give them a quick preview of what they could learn if they book you, including some things that they absolutely will find um, relevant to them. And of course, you wrap it up with a call to action. So tell them, go ahead and book you. And as yeah, you absolutely. mentioned, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a great kind of a recipe for a, for cranking out those intro videos. Now, if you have a lot of uh, if you have a lot of video, uh, if you have a lot of listings and therefore a lot of intro videos, how do you avoid making it sound kind of repetitive or canned? Well. I think you got to. You're not going to sound repetitive or canned if you are are focusing on that specific help out, and it's not just a general one. Um, Google had posted the Google Help Outs team had posted that you can actually use one video for multiple listings if they're related. I don't recommend you do that. Um, again, what I really mean when I said connecting is let me let me let me demonstrate for you what I really mean. Um, let's say, for example, I'm creating a video for oh, let, uh, my copywriting help out. Okay, you want to be human. Hey, this is uh, Ramon Williamson. This is a copywriting help out. So hopefully, uh, this copy on the page here is connecting with you and making you want to talk to me. So why would you want to talk to me about about copywriting? Well, there's a lot of stuff you can read on the page. Let me tell you something that's not on the page. It's probably the biggest reason to go ahead and schedule now. Okay, so you see what I did? That's another little template. So one template is you can highlight something that's like a, a mistake or a benefit or something that you can that you can cover, like one big benefit. Then another thing you could do is tell them something that's not in the help out uh, the help out listing. Okay, How, something that's not. Okay, you could read the help out listing for yourself, but let me tell you one thing that that you're going to get. Here's another template. Okay, I'm just giving you templates. Like the opening is pretty much the same. Just be human and connect with people. Don't try to be professional video announcer. Okay, <laughs> just say, hey, this is a, congratulations. Look, I am so excited that we're going to be talking in this help out. I can't wait for us to talk. Then. You have this middle part, which is what I'm giving you some different templates for right now. And then you have the closing is always a call to action. Go ahead and schedule. I look forward to talking with you. Or if you have something at the end where you say uh, there's some preparation, you might say, hey, two things will make our help out great. Um, I've got a little uh, checklist in my listing. Make sure you go ahead and do that uh, and or respond to the email that I send you when you book because that's going to make sure that I can prepare to make this help out the best experience for you possible. So you might want to tag something there. If you're going to send them something by email, let them know if you're expecting them to fill out some sort of or do something prior to the help out. But this middle part, I'm giving you some templates. The middle part is you can highlight a primary benefit. You can highlight something that you didn't say in the help out listing. Something else that you could do is you could share an experience of someone that you were in a help out with. So you could say something like, hey, you know, I want to let you know one of my first help outs, and this was for this is real, what I'm getting ready to say. Hey, you know, you made a great decision, da 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 da. Hey, you know, one of my very first public speaking help outs was with a 10-year-old boy from Australia who was running for an office at his school. And uh -huh. I was able to share with him a simple little thing that just like made him uh, like a superstar on his campus. So I know that if I can help that little 10-year-old boy like crush it on campus, I can help you with whatever you're going to be uh, talking about. So it's just kind of like a little funny thing like that, saying, saying something that, 
saying something that was actually an experience that you had uh, with someone in, a, in an actual help out. So I just gave you three little templates right there that you can alternate between and, and have completely different videos for, for each help out. Remember, there's one person looking at that video, talk to that one person. So it's, you know, it's connect, it's have that little content teaser, okay, that's giving them why. And, and oh, I just love these diagrams uh, that, that Sasha does. Right there where you have content teaser in the middle, put in parentheses why. Because what you're really telling them is the reason why, okay, to go ahead and book with you. And the reason why this is going to be valuable, the reason why that this is going to be a benefit, the reason why to choose me or you and this get versus anybody else that was in the help out. And again, like I said, in that connecting part, you want to affirm their decision. Act like they're already going to sign up. Hey, congratulate. You don't have to say congratulate. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I say that and I can kind of say it in a way that I get, you know, that like it comes across okay coming from me, but maybe it doesn't sound <laughs> right coming from you. So you just kind of say, hey, look, you've made a great decision. Say it just like that. Hey, you've made a great decision. Hey, you've made a great decision. I am, I'm really looking forward to talking to you. And I want to let you know in this little video here, uh, the number one thing that, that we're going to talk about that most people don't even think to, talk, to ask or don't, most people don't even think, you see what I mean? You do that little uh, thing like that in the middle and then you close up with a call to action. And that closing part is a call to action. That's what it really is, call to action. It's like um, tell them what to do. Don't assume. Don't a lot of people, they try to get fancy, they try to get cute. No, don't make any assumptions, okay? Stop assuming anything. Tell people. Be very specific about what you want to, people to do, and you'll find that more times than not, they'll actually do it. And that's really a, a, a real secret uh, about, about effective copy as well, is to be very specific. Mm-hmm. So tell them to go and click on that schedule button or whatever it is. Yes, and absolutely. Pick a slot in your calendar and so forth. Yeah. Okay. As well, you know, it's it's great to have all these different templates or, or ideas for what to go what what goes in that middle. And I'm sure that as a lot of people start coming out of their intro videos, we'll see a, a lot of interesting patterns too. Tell me, yeah, absolutely. You know, so this is kind of marketing on the Help Outs platform, but one of the things that people have been really asking about is how do you market, uh, how do you market your Help Outs outside Help Outs? So how do you take advantage of Twitter? How do you take advantage of YouTube? How do you reach out to people through your blog and so forth? I, 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 I've been watching your, uh, your video series with great interest, and I see you recently encouraged people to do something very similar. So can you share a little bit about your experiences in reaching out beyond the HelpOuts platform? Okay, so I, I think there's a couple of things. And again, what I want people to see and recognize is that HelpOuts is one channel or one vehicle through which people can come to you and get access to what it is you have to offer. It's one level of access. Um, I teach my private clients something that I call levels of access and a path of growth. A path of growth is thinking two or three steps ahead of your ideal client or customer and anticipating what they're going to need at each stage of their growth in the relationship with you and giving them a starting point and giving them a point to grow to. So you're really giving them a kind of success ladder to climb with you progressively. And so help out fits somewhere in the success ladder that you're setting up in your business with your clients and customers. And, and ultimately, you've got to decide where that is. So, so the first thing is to get in your mind is that help out is a certain level of access to you. And it's one of multiple levels of access to you. So it's not just about promoting help out. It's about, it's about having a larger conversation in the marketplace that's about the value that you offer and then pointing to help outs as one level of access or one way to get access to what it is you have to offer. And so help outs ought to be in the context of the larger conversation that you're having with people. Now that said, let me get really specific, okay? So, so there are, so I want to talk about content marketing. People talk about content marketing. All markets are conversations. 
you find the conversation that you contribute to in the marketplace and you enter that conversation in a value adding way and the way you add value in in the in the internet social media uh, conversation is some sort of content that content could be anything from a quote that you're sharing to an to a link to a blog article that's either on your website or somebody else's website. It could be audio, it could be video, it could be any number of things that you're sharing out as content. It could be a PDF checklist, okay? There's, there's probably 20, 25, 30 different types of content that you can share with people that builds and positions you as the person to listen to and work with on a particular topic. Now. Let's talk about this specifically in terms of what this looks like. What you want to do first of all is you want to make a list of all of the potential topics or little things that you could tell people about your larger topic. So I tell everybody figure out a topic or figure out one thing that you are going to be known for. Okay, Figure out the one thing that you're going to be known for. And then ask yourself, what are all of the related subtopics? What are all of the little micro elements of that? And make a big, 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 big list. Okay, if you don't know what all those are, they don't come to, to your head, hey, Google your topic. Look in the table of contents of 25 books on Amazon.com. Go out and do the research and, and start exposing yourself to what people are saying in your market and make a big list of potential things that you could say to somebody and make it very, very, very specific. Micro it down. Be very, very, very specific in, in items on the list. Don't, don't have big things. If you have big things, then ask yourself, what are the four or five things within this big thing that I could talk about or that I could touch on or that I could share with somebody about? Once you've got that, you now have the basis of creating a content sandwich around an offer. And I'm using this because anybody can visualize this, okay? The sandwich, there's more bread in most sandwiches, unless you go to the really health food, healthy, healthy, healthy places. There's more bread in the sandwich than meat or, or whatever's in the middle, okay, generally speaking. And so, so, so what happens is the sandwich is the delivery mechanism that delivers what's inside. Um, another way of thinking about this is um, Gary Vanderchuk wrote a book called Jab, 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 Left Hook. Okay, so what was he really saying? The jab, 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 jab is helpful content. It's being helpful. Uh, being helpful, being human, connecting with people. And then the, the left hook is whatever the offer is. The left hook in this case is your help out listing promotion. So what you want to do is is 80% of the time you want to be sharing stuff that is helping people. Little quotes, article links, all of that stuff. And then within one out of maybe five or six or seven shares of content, for example, on Twitter, for example, on Facebook, you now want to mention that your help out is a solution to the problem that people are having in that particular area. Okay, and how you can cover it. And I don't want to go too detailed in this, but let me just show you how to dissect help out marketing. It, every help out has probably 10 or 15 different micro benefits within it. And each of those micro benefits can be a specific themed tweet. So, for example, uh, with public speaking, uh, writing a winning speech. So one aspect of that is I teach a method of using, for example, uh, mind mapping or what I refer to as clustering, okay, in, in a part of the, of the speech writing process. Well, I could highlight that. So I could say um, winning uh, how to create a winning speech with just a napkin and a pen. And then the help out, okay? Uh, the the napkin pin method of speech writing, and then the help out. So it's like you want to think of like all the little micro things that you would talk about in the help out, 
and articulate that as a benefit and then connect the link to it so that you're not saying that the same thing over and over and over again in social media saying hey go sign up for my help out go sign up for my help out go sign up for my help out or giving just the name or the title of the help out and the link you want to you want to come up with you know 25 or 30 different tweets for that help out and you want to share those tweets rotate through those tweets uh, for example but sandwich them between other useful content that you are sharing on your topic and that's why I say don't do a help out or something that you that's not in your wheelhouse. That's not something that you are passionate about. Okay. If you notice, I have a bunch of different help outs. But all of them have one fundamental thing in common. They all empower people who author, who, who want to build an author, advice, teach online, or life coach business that makes money from anywhere. Everything that I do is focused on using your ability to inspire for a living to create lifestyle, financial, and location freedom for yourself. In other words, to be able to help people, get paid for helping people, and live anywhere you want and do whatever you want while being able to do that. So everything that I talk about is about that. And by the way, the reason I'm so passionate about it is because it's what I live on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, it's 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 what, for example, seven years ago, a lot of people don't know. Seven years ago, I upped and moved a thousand miles to be a part of a spiritual community that I wanted to be connected with a, a guy that I'd known for a really long time, a community I wanted to be involved in. What made it possible is the stuff that I'm teaching. So the reason I talk about I, I talk about copywriting is because people who are in my market need to figure out copywriting. The reason that I talk about writing a book because everybody in my market needs to write a book. The reason I talk about making a speech because eventually everybody in my market is going to have to speak. The reason I talk about creating an ebook. The reason I talk about uh, 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 putting together a content calendar, creating things because everybody's going to have to do that. So you got to think about what that client, that ideal client or customer of yours, is going to need, and you got to build a whole tree of hangouts with juicy little fruits hanging on it. So they can come to Google and pluck those fruits off and connect with you. So <laughs> makes a ton of sense, and I can see how you know if you if you've got your glory story, you are oh it, if you understand that and you're connected with that, and you're really building these help outs around something that you're deeply passionate about, then you find all these things that maybe they're obstacles you've learned in doing a workaround, maybe they're gifts you've come across, maybe there's there's lessons that you learn from deep experience, and you want to to get the word out so that other people can learn from them. And that's, the, you know, that's, that's, that's what you build your offers on. Sasha, I don't know if it's on my end or not, but I'm, I'm barely hearing you. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, that's me. Hang on a sec. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't hear. I was hearing you great, loud and clear, and now, for some reason, I'm not. Okay, I don't know if anybody is hearing what I'm hearing, but I'm I'm not hearing Sasha anymore. And if you're hearing her, great. I'm not hearing her. It looks like her mic is off. Uh, all right. Is it slightly better? Awesome. Awesome. You're back. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had to switch off my headset because um, I ran out of power, but which oh, is good because yeah. um, uh, lots of interesting things happening today. Uh, but what I was saying was that uh, um, uh, so what I'm hearing is if you're if you're building your help outs around something you're passionate about and you're finding all these ways to you know think about the help outs that other people will need as they're following that path or as they're as they're learning from your experience and, and the things that you can share then it's easy to think about the micro benefits that people are looking for because you've gone through that path yourself you understand what it's like and you can show people all right if you're interested in this step this is what you're going to get out of it uh, and you also have a lot of non-selling, not just you know, uh, sign up for my help out, book book this or buy my ebook or whatever. You have a lot of useful experience to share as well. Yeah, because ultimately, when a person when a person hires you or gives you money, they're not really buying the product or service. 
they're buying what the product or service can do for them and they're buying it from you because you are providing leadership you're providing direction to them you're providing a relationship that unlocks their confidence to take action in whatever it is so so what I'm really saying is that you start your marketing from the perspective of owning the topic and, 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 and dissecting it and being aware of all of the different things that you can fundamentally help a person to, to have an understanding about. And again, you're not, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to teach tips in the marketplace for free. That's a bad decision, by the way. Um, and that, that's a whole, that could be a whole different conversation that we can have. But see, most people try to give away their knowledge to get a client. And when you are marketing a help out, the, the thing of it is, is not to, not to give away your knowledge to get people to come to the help out. What you're really doing is your, uh, the best kind of marketing is uh, mindset marketing. Uh, marketing that helps a person think about the problem, define what the problem is, uh, help them avoid common mistakes. That's the kind of content that's actually going to cause people to want to give you money. If you are giving out the how-to, okay, as the primary thing in your marketing, people aren't going to give you money. They're going to just wait around until you tell them all, until you tell them all the things. So what you want to do in your marketing is you want to teach people how to think about the problem. You want to teach them mindset. You want to teach them mistakes to avoid. You want to teach them. Um, you want to uh, teach them uh, how to. Uh, oh, you want to teach them like examples and stories and scenarios in which people have uh, been able to go after something and what they learned. You want to teach people. The, the micro uh, distinctions on stuff, okay? Uh, for example, your core content, there's likely 25 things around your core content that eventually would come out and they would need to know. Take two or three or four or five of those things and share those things versus, you know, whatever it is, you, you know, you're ultimately doing. And again, that's a deeper conversation. Now, it's, I think it's vital to do a few things. So again, you're approaching the market from the perspective of being an authority on this topic, being the go-to person. That's the mindset and the perspective that you want to have up front. What that does is it causes you to approach Twitter, Facebook, your blog, videos in a completely different way than most people. Because most people are approaching Twitter, Facebook, their blog as they push something out there to try to get people to buy. And you can look at the people's blog posts, you can look at the people's Twitter posts, you can look at them and see the ones who are primarily, they, they haven't owned their topic because what they're primarily doing is promoting. They're primarily pushing, just pushing, 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 pushing. They're not really having a conversation. They're not really speaking with a human voice. If you notice on my Twitter account, I get a ton of people contacting me through Twitter, okay? The reason I get a lot of people t contacting me through Twitter is because I'm really human on Twitter. I was looking for my phone. I'll give you an example of what I mean. On most days, I'm going to I'm going to post a weight loss weigh in on Twitter. <laughs> That's a signature thing. I'm getting on the scale and telling people how much I weigh. How many people do you know on Twitter doing that? Not a lot. I'll get on Twitter and I'll say something like, "Hey, good morning. What are you focused on today?" And I'll actually have like one person, each time I do that, say, hey, I'm writing a blog post. I'll tweet at them and say, hey, let me know as soon as you finish that blog post. They'll tweet me back with the blog post. I'll retweet what they did, and I'll say, great job. So I'm, I'm demonstrating coaching in Twitter. I'm, another thing I'll do is a signature post. So I'll have something like today's blog starter. So I'll give people a little blogging idea create a top 10 list. So I'm always thinking about how to actually coach and help my ideal client through my Twitter account. So if you read my Twitter feed, it reads very differently than most people. I'm not tweeting a whole bunch of articles. I'm going to start tweeting more articles and links, okay, because that's just good for getting more people to follow you and retweet you. But I get a lot of engagement just with what I'm doing. So I ask people today, um, I posted six hours ago. 
What did you accomplish this week? Take time to document your process in a journal. Okay? Today's coaching audio. So I did the audio as well as the video for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll do things like how to get a breakthrough, one, two, three, like giving them three things. So my point is, is that the mindset that you approach social media has to be having a conversation with people in social media, not just pushing things out. And you want to have, you want to be helping 80% of the time and then pointing to something that's the natural next step to go further. See, because when I post my help outs, it isn't an interruption. It isn't a market. It isn't a commercial break. It's the <laughs> natural extension for those people who are ready to connect with me. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes perfect sense. You're not, you're not just dropping it in out of the blue. You're saying, all right, here are some tips. And if you want to continue the conversation, book me in a help out. You know, and, and I've, I've seen other examples that you shared as well in, your, in the Help Outs Discuss community. I'm already I'm already having the conversation. Yeah. I'm already having the conversation with people. That would be like you and I are talking about something now, and then all of a sudden, I start talking about, you know, Caribbean cooking. Well, that's a <laughs> shout out to Larry. Okay. But that would just be weird. Yeah. Like yeah. what what is he talking about? Oh, okay. so it's so if I understand right, it's more like okay, you're being super helpful, and um, and you know you might say okay, he, you know here's here's some tips to help you out, and then other people who are looking for you might come across your helpouts where they can dig in a little bit more, uh, or you might say hey, you know here's here's some other places where you can go to check it out, and your helpouts is one of them. Absolutely. In other words, the helpout becomes the logical next step for the person who's ready to have a conversation with me. Again, it's path of growth. You see, I actually see my Twitter and Facebook and, and, and what I'm doing. And, and, and I'm gearing up to start doing videos. I am now over my video perfectionism. And so, <laughs> no, I was, I was locked down in video perfectionism for a long time. And now that I'm over it, I'm, I'm going to use video as my primary methodology because I'm just not a writer. I'm not a journalist. So you got to find your voice. Uh, but what I was able to do with the video today, for example, is I was able to make the video on my phone. I was able to strip out the audio uh, with a, with the a software on my computer. And so I was able to put the audio on on Spreaker. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then I put the I put the video on YouTube and I tweeted out both in two separate tweets. So I said, hey, if you just want the audio only, you can get it here. If you want the video on, here over here, and then on my really good videos, I'm going to upload them to nonotes.com and get them transcribed. Okay, so now I'm taking that one little signature thing that I'm comfortable with and turning it into three or four different types of content. Then you can go over to canva.com, which I'm like super, super, super excited about. Okay, um, in fact, I got a tutorial on it on YouTube right now. Uh, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. You can take a quote or something out of what you said in the video, and then Canva allows you to make really cool graphics without being a graphic designer, like fast, bam. Using a template, you can just drop that quote in. A minute later, you have a graphic you can share in Facebook. And now I've taken that one thing that I did, and I've turned it into three or four, five different things that I can now share out through all of the social media conversations that I'm having in a way that advances that conversation through Twitter, through Facebook, through through G+. Um, and I'll, I'll throw in a bonus thing about social media. You know the biggest aha, Sasha, I've had mm -hmm. in the last probably 10 days about social media? Yeah. Social media is like, every social media channel is like a different radio station. So if you go through radio stations, you're going to notice that some of those radio stations are hard rock, some of them are easy listening, some of them are R&B. Well, every social media platform is like a different radio station. Something different appeals to people. Like, I'll give you an example. In Google+, Plus, people have gone gift crazy. They're infographic crazy, okay? Every other post is an infographic or or gift. I noticed on Facebook when I post an image that you can create with Canva and add a couple of sentences to it, 
okay, maybe a quote picture, I get more engagement. I always get likes on Facebook when I do that. On Twitter, it's something else. It's more of a personal connection. And, and it, you know, it's a personal connection and it's signature content. So what you got to think about is think about taking that one piece of content that you're going to use to market whatever it is you're going to offer, okay, to create the sandwich for your help out offer. And then what you want to do is repurpose it in a way that fits the channel based on what people like on that specific channel. And when you do that, it's just huge. It's huge, 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 huge what begins to happen. And then the most important thing that I could end up in saying about this in terms of, of marketing your help outs, really two things. Larry taught me this, the Caribbean, the Caribbean cooking guy. He's got like a million people uh, following him in, in Google+. So I asked Larry, how do, you, how do you do that, man? Well, he shared something with me that is not so much a Google Plus secret, but it's a general attitude secret. What you got to do to promote your stuff online is you got to build a posse. And you build a posse by giving first, by helping first. So pick 10 or 15 people that put out good stuff that may not necessarily be competing with you, but they're complimentary to you and share their stuff all the time. Like it, retweet it, uh, plus it. Have your little posse of people. And what you're going to find out is those people are going to start spreading you. And it's not one plus one equals two in social media. It's one plus one equals ten, a hundred, a thousand. All of a sudden, you put out one tweet, and that one tweet reaches 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 people. And then the second thing I want to share with you, uh, in addition to that, in, in addition to having that posse, second thing you want to do is be consistent. Find that consistency that actually works for you for something that you can maintain. Because it's better to be consistent. And, and I've been, woo, I don't even want to start. I'll get that thing started, then I get into perfection, and I'll shut down. And what that inconsistency, people start looking for you. And when they start looking for you, they start trusting you. When they start trusting you and you show up consistently, that means you're going to show up in the paid thing that they actually do. Mm -hmm. So I know we I know we've crammed a lot of stuff, but that's a big what I just said. By the way, you said mm hmm, I, yeah, that resonated with you. That's a big thing right there. If you're consistent with one blog post a week, and that's all you do, you are building trust in the mind of your audience, and they will transfer that trust to your to your paid thing. They will feel like you can be trusted in that as well. So if you're inconsistent. And and sometimey with with what you're doing in your in your marketing and promotion, you're gonna be that same way. Mm -hmm. I want people to start a video challenge. I want to challenge people to start doing video. Let's yeah. make a video once a yeah. week, three times a week, five five times a day. We ought to have a big video posse where everybody in Help House is making one video a week, and we are all sharing each other's video. Now, the people reason people don't do that, Sasha, is because they're scared and they're operating from scarcity. So you got to break that scarcity mindset off of you, thinking that if you promote somebody else, it's taken away from you. No, what you make happen for others, the universe makes happen for you. You get back what you send out. And the reason a lot of people are struggling right now with whatever it is they're doing online is because they're playing the long range, the lone ranger. They're trying to go out. And they, in fact, they're the long ranger without a tanto. <laughs> okay, if you can imagine that. But they're out there trying to make it on their own, trying to do their own thing, you know, scared, fearful, uh, operating from that mindset of scarcity and lack. And when you, you got to break out of that, you break out of that, you're going to operate at a totally different place. So, absolutely. And before we wrap up with like one key action you want people to take, I want to quickly come back to Wilma's question. She's struggling with video perfectionism too. So if we're going to get everyone on this video posse, what's the one thing that Wilma and other people who are scared of this uh, or actually who are struggling with perfectionism, what's the one thing that can get them past that? And then let's wrap up with the, what's one thing people are going to take away from this uh, so that they can copyright and market better. Whoa, okay. So, all right. What so as a, recent, a recently recovering perfectionist, um, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there. You gotta get you gotta get some buddies. You gotta stop hiding behind your computer, okay? And and get a buddy and put yourself on the line and actually do it. 
So for example, I have a I have a, a help out about about video blog on your smartphone. So get in the get in the help out with me where we're actually going to do it right in the help out. Like that's one of the distinctions of my help outs. A lot of people get in the help out, they talk about it. My help outs you actually do it. Okay? So, you know, get get somebody that you're actually doing it with you because even if you do it poorly, it, it will work. The second thing is you got to do it over and over and over again. The only way you get better at it, the only way you have more confidence at, in it is that you actually do it. And, and so be willing to make 12 bad videos. I'm going to share one other thing with you. You didn't ask this, but this is a big thing for mindset. You've got to approach this from the perspective that nobody is going to pay attention to you for at least 90 days in your market. In other words, you can't go in and put a video on YouTube one day and look at it and say, wow, I only got five views. And then the next video, I only got four views. And the next video, I only got eight views. If you, everybody's videos look like that at first. And when you're consistent, your audience will show up. And that's the thing that most people are unwilling to do. You've got to go in with the mindset that I'm, everybody's going to, I'm going to be ignored for the next 90 days. And the secret is I got to stay consistent for at least 90 days and then your audience starts to show up. But nobody shows up in the first few weeks. But then your audience shows up and they go back and watch every video that you've done in YouTube. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got to have that mindset that it's more important to do it and to be, and to be consistent with it than to, to get a lot of results up front. And, and the, the, the biggest thing that I would leave people with in this, in this uh, conversation is to go back and listen to the two sessions that we've done, okay? Look at Sasha's notes and use these to create a help out, okay? A description, a title. Then leverage my copywriting help out session so that I can look at that and help you tweak it so mm -hmm. that you get one example that you can build from. I'm just I'm going to tell you the master secret of some of the best copywriters in the world. The best copywriters of the world never start from scratch. They have what they refer to as a swipe file. So if I would tell you the most powerful little thing is two things. It's a two, A, B, A, B. Get one help out that you can use as a basis, a framework for your other help outs. Get one of them right, okay? Then number two, look at other help outs, okay, that are successful and learn from them and build a swipe file of ideas that you can integrate into your own help outs. And, and if you do that, you are going to become better and better and better at that whole process. And 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 you gotta be you gotta be open and teachable. You know, I've talked to some people, I tell them, I walk them through the thing, and I look and they changed it back in two days. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, you know. So you, you've got to have that mindset that you are willing to be uh, coachable and 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 you're willing to to test it. And if you do, if you do, it'll get, get better. And also testing, testing. You know, don't be afraid to test one title for three or four weeks and then change that title to something else and let that run for three or four weeks and then change it back to the other thing and see which one got the most signups. Mm -hmm. okay, so don't be afraid to test stuff. All right. So thanks, yes. uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, if you're if you're looking forward to applying these to these tips to your life, as uh, Ramon mentioned, start with understanding your market. Start with really getting into their brains, understanding what their nice. context is, what what the burning concerns are, and speaking their language. That will make it easy for you to do the copywriting for your title, your description, your intro video, your tweets, everything else, and as um, as you as Ramon, you laid out, you know, get one help out right, maybe by booking Ramon's copywriting help out, uh, and collect 
interesting ideas from other swap, swap uh, uh, from other help ads for your swap file, and then keep on testing and improving. Ramon, thank you so much for sharing your tips and on this uh, podcast as well as in the community, uh, and um, and I'm looking forward to being part of your soon to be 90 day video posse challenge. Right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I'm going to end the broadcast here. You can find this podcast and notes at helpershelpout.com. That's H-E-L-P-E-R-S, sorry, H-E-L-P-E-R-S-H-E-L-P-O-U-T dot C-O-M. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, wave bye-bye and wave bye-bye also. And uh, here we go. Bye.